Hi, I'm Breadman. You may know me from dropping the solo nuke, solo duo nuke, solo quads nuke, and the world's first nuke, but that's not what today's about. Today is about you. I'm going to be teaching you everything I know about dropping the nuke in order for you to secure yourself some of those juicy nuke rewards. Today's video is going to be cut into four parts. The nuke explain section, the how to nuke section, the strategy section, and the optimal nuke section. I'm going to recommend that you watch the whole video fully as you'll absorb the full extent of the tips, but I'll also provide timestamps throughout the video making it easy to traverse. Let's get into it. The nuke is a unique mechanic of the game that was released way back in Warzone 2. There's two ways to unlock a singular attempt at the nuke. You can either A, win 5 games in a row in any BR mode, or B, win 30 games total during a single season. You'll notice that option B is tracked in the top right when you load into a BR mode, but both of these present different challenges. By far the easiest, however, is the 30 wins in a single season. The important part to know about either option is that new contracts are gained for the individual and not the group. Imagine you just won 5 games in a row with a full quad. You'll each have a singular contract to attempt, because because you each won five games in a row. You can attempt this contract with the same quad or even load up into a solo match and attempt your contract there. The same goes for option B. As long as you win 30 games in BR, no matter who with, you'll score yourself a contract. If you don't want to use your contract, all you have to do is not pick it up. It's that simple. New contracts do go away, however, during the starts of new seasons, so make sure to attempt your contract before season three comes out. Heading into the how to nuke category, we're going to get straight into it. The nuke contract will despawn within the first 90 seconds of the game if it's not picked up. Once the contract has been picked up, a duffel bag will be marked on the map in a random location, generally in proximity to the contract itself. Upon opening, the duffel bag will drop a lot of money and a Geiger counter. This item is essential and will scale with each mode. If you're in solos, it'll drop one, in duos, it'll drop two, and so on. Once the duffel bag is opened, head over to the newly marked green circle on the map. The only way to see this green circle is to have the Geiger counter in your inventory. It works as any other tactical equipment does, so once you're in the green circle, you want to hold your tactical equipment button, which for me is Q. Once out, you'll look in every direction and walk towards the higher numbers. It's like a weird game of hot or cold. When you eventually find what the Geiger counter is pointing to, you'll realize that it's a yellow crate similar to a regular loot crate. This part is very important to the nuke, however, and can change whether or not you drop the nuke entirely. Let's take a step back shortly and talk about the nuke process in its simplest form. You grab three different elements, plant them at the bomb site, wait for two minutes, and explode the map, winning the game. It sounds simple, but each of these elements have very important characteristics to note. The first element, beryllium, is the tracker element. When picking it up, it tells you that your location has been revealed. It's not lying. From the moment you pick up the beryllium to the moment you either drop it or die, you'll be marked on the map like a most wanted and a live ping combined. People will be able to see you everywhere around the map, even through walls and smoke grenades as a little nuke icon. The second element, tritium, disables your radar in any vehicles as you approach. Combine beryllium and tritium and you're a walking target. No radar, live mark through walls, and without a vehicle, you're going to be pretty naked. That's not even considering the third element, plutonium. Once picked up, plutonium activates a radiation leak. Basically, this just means that every 5 seconds, you'll take a little bit of damage, but not enough to kill you. Just enough to get to the way of your plating animation. At this point, the nuke probably seems impossible. It honestly would be incredibly hard if not for one simple mechanic. You can drop them. This does come with a catch, however, as others can see them once they're dropped, but at least you won't face any of the negative effects while they're on the ground. It's also important to note that in group modes such as duos, trios, or quads, you can split the elements amongst the group. One person can hold one, the other hold another, and so on. But some level of coordination must exist in order to plant the elements later down the line. I'm planning, I'm planning, okay? Yeah, yeah keep smoking. I got mortared, I got mortared. Yeah, yeah, you're fine, you should be fine. Armored truck, don't get ran over, okay? Yeah, I think you should be fine. I'm gonna airstrike. I'm about to, I'm about to, I'm about to, yeah, yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good. 
now that you have an understanding of the elements, let's get back to understanding the exact process of the nuke. Once the yellow box is opened, everyone on the map can see the beryllium, or BE, on the ground. You'll want to swoop this up and await on the next location to appear on the map shortly after. This next location is the drilling case. This step of the process to obtain the tritium is pretty self-explanatory. Make your way to the drilling case and begin the process. It's very similar to a recon contract and will alert others near you with a flare above the building it's in, so don't be surprised when people start running at you. Wait for the duration of the progress bar and be sure to be in close proximity of the actual drilling case itself as if you're too far away it will not activate. Once the progress bar is full, the tritium will immediately drop on the ground, so pick that up as well. As soon as the tritium is picked up, you'll notice a big yellow helicopter icon flying into the map from a random direction. It's important to note that other players can't see the brilliant briefcase or the drilling case, but they can see the big yellow chopper. Most likely, the chopper isn't going to be anywhere close to where the drilling case spawned. Sometimes you can get lucky, however, but as soon as you can, make your way over to this yellow helicopter. Now, you'll begin shooting it until it's down. Depending on the mode, it'll have more or less health. If you're in solos, the chopper will only take 1 or 2 mags to down, but in quads, it'll be more like 6 to 8. It will shoot back occasionally, but will rarely do enough damage to actually kill you. Remember though, that at any step in the process, there are still 100 other players on the map either actively hunting you down or posting up with your demise in mind. After all the nukes I've done, it actually seems like people don't like to be nuked on. Who would have thought? Once the chopper is down, it'll fly a little bit further and drop the nuclear crate. Open the crate to pick up the plutonium. Immediately on the plutonium extraction, the bomb site will begin to reveal. The whole bomb site reveal process will take around 30 to 40 seconds depending on how lucky you are. As soon as you see the yellow plane making its way through the map, you'll know roughly the line in which the nuke will drop. Once dropped, you'll see a nuclear canister on the map showing the exact spot it'll end up moments later. It'll take around 40 seconds total to make its way from the sky to the ground. As soon as it's on the ground, you'll be able to store the elements inside. If you have all three elements on your person, you can store them one at a time, and if you have the elements spread across multiple people, you can deposit all of them roughly at the same time. Once all three elements are in the nuclear bomb site, it's time to plant. You do have around 5 minutes to plant the bomb, so don't feel too rushed. The bomb itself takes 10 seconds to plant, and those have to be consecutive. You can't move around while planting, and stopping the planting animation will reset your progress back to zero. Once planted, you're in the final stretch of the nuke. You have two minutes to defend the bomb from any imminent threat. It's important to note that once the bomb is planted, it's your team versus the entire lobby. Either you make it through the two minutes and detonate the bomb, winning the game, or some other team defuses it and they win. There are no other outcomes. The only way for someone to defuse the bomb is to be near the little yellow planting laptop to start the defusal process. When someone initiates the bomb defusal for the first time, it'll let you know with a voice line that says, enemies inputting a disarm code, or something like that. This is really important, as it's the only time you'll get a notification. For future defusal attempts, you won't receive any notification at all. One of the most important things to consider as well is that the bomb defusal progress is saved, and it only takes 10 seconds. This means that if somebody runs up and starts the bomb defusal, and it takes you 2 seconds to kill them, there are only 8 seconds remaining on the bomb defusal. This makes the bombs incredibly hard to defend properly when there are loads of people running at them. If you are, however, able to make it through those 2 minutes, you've successfully completed the champion's quest. I know it seems difficult, but heading into our strategy section, you'll get a better look at what you could do to limit the amount of difficult factors you'll face during your nuke attempt. Let's talk about strategy. There isn't any doubt that the nuke is hard to drop in Warzone, but there's definitely some things that you could add into your nuke repertoire to make them easier. Let's start from the first step. You spawn in, grab the contract, get the Geiger counter, find the yellow crate, but wait. This part of the nuke attempt is make or break. I told you before that when you pick up the nuclear crate that contains plutonium, it'll start the bomb site revealing process. What I didn't say is, the bomb site spawns are in pre-picked destinations. Take a look at this map. A member of my community, Glitch420, made this with a few of his buddies. And this is Nuke Gold. 
If there's anything you take away from this video, it's this map. These are, give or take a couple, all of the nuke bomb site locations on the entire map of Urzikstan. This is massively important because if you look at the circle when you start the game, you can kind of get a feel for where the bomb sites could potentially be. If you look at the map and it heavily prefers the middle section of the map, you'll know roughly the four or five different spots the bomb site could end up. Think back to that yellow crate with the beryllium. Like I said, this part of the process is very important. Once you open the yellow crate, you'll need to immediately transport the beryllium close to where you think the bomb site will be and drop it. In my opinion, you should wait until the first circle closes to open the yellow crate so that you'll get a better idea of where the potential bomb sites could be. The best spot to drop the BE is in a spot that's really easy to retake. Say later in the game you need to come in and swoop it up in a chopper or LTV to take it to the bomb site, you'll be able to precision the BE and grab it swiftly off the top of a roof or a gas station and deliver it to the bomb site safely. Alternatively, you could place it near a zip line, but this is a bit sketchy as people could just shoot down the zip line, leaving you helpless. There is some luck involved with this though, but if you end up dropping the beryllium where the bomb site is or near it, or even just in a place that's easy to deliver it to the bomb site, your chances of dropping the nuke increase exponentially. Once you've dropped the B in a good spot, the rest of the game kind of plays itself based off of what I've told you so far. There aren't many tips with the drilling case or even with shooting the plutonium yellow chopper, but there are some things you could do prior to the game to set up yourself for success. This is what my nuke loadout consists of. Most importantly, I have a thermal SVA for my long range, which gets used especially once the bomb is planted. People will throw a barrage of smokes at the nuclear canister, so much so that the thermal can barely catch up. Before anyone thinks this is cap, this is the exact gun build that I used to drop my solo quad nuke a couple weeks ago. Thermals are the one true way to make sure that no one is defusing the bomb, without actually going to check yourself. Secondly, I have my HRM submachine gun, but any submachine gun will work. Use your preference. After that, make sure to run smokes and simtexes as you'll need to be smoking your way around the map from point A to point B if you don't have a vehicle. Lastly, the preferred perk package to run for nukes is EOD, double time, restock, and high alert. The most important perks of the four are restock and high alert. Restock's ability to keep your smokes and aids refreshed will consistently have you ready for whoever may come their way during your nuke run. High alert is pretty self-explanatory as well, as it'll keep you from being caught off guard while transporting the elements. Speaking about equipment a little bit more, I can't gas up smokes enough. Not only are they great mid-match, but smokes are incredibly important when planting the bomb. They give you a ton of cover without being seen. One smoke lasts for around 7.5 seconds, and keep in mind that the bomb plant takes a full 10 seconds. If you have your teammate smoking you consistently, that will be the best way to get the bomb planted. Alternatively, sometimes when you throw smokes to go plant, people will throw nades in order to block the planting process. I have dropped multiple nukes where people have just let me sneak up to the bomb site and plant it without even smoking, which is important to keep in mind in a pinch. Lastly, let's talk about the optimal nuke. If you only have one shot of the contract, this is what you're going to want to do. If you remember from earlier, when you pick up your beryllium, you either need to place it on the potential bomb site or place it near the bomb site. If you get unlucky and throw it down in the wrong place early on, you're going to have to get lucky in order to make it to the bomb site with it in one piece. This is where some strategy comes in. Referencing the nuke map from earlier, we could see that the bottom left city has a bunch of pretty decent bomb sites. The reason that city is so easy to drop nukes in compared to the rest of the map is that there are tons of height. When you need to take the beryllium to a roof early on, you could just fly it to a really tall building, leave it there, and later the game come and grab it and fly straight to the bomb site with a glide. It's almost too easy compared to other parts of the map. Remember, before you use your nuke contract, you could load up and leave as many games as you need to find the perfect nuke circle. The perfect nuke circle looks similar to this one, which allowed me to drop my first solo nuke. Remember to bring your thermal with you, extra smoke grenades, and you should have some pretty smooth sailing from there. Well, as smooth as a nuke attempt could be. It's important to note that no matter how much preparation you put in, the odds are heavily stacked against you in a nuke run. Realistically, there are 100 other people against you, which just isn't really that good for odds. But if you take all of this advice and add it together, you have your best shot at the contract. Don't beat yourself up too bad if you fail it and hit that regain. There's always another shot.
If you want to learn anything else regarding the new contract, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below and I'll be sure to get to it. I also want to add that there is some speculation that the new contract could be changed during Season 3 update on April 3rd. This could potentially throw off the nuke meta, but until then, this is the most valid information that I have. If Season 3 does change the nuke runs, I'll be sure to make an update video to help you guys out. If you did enjoy the content today, I really would appreciate it if you would consider subscribing. It does help me out a ton, and the growth recently has really motivated me to be producing high-quality content like this for you guys. Until next time, though, peace.